Hey, how's it going everyone? It is your boy Wags here, and just yesterday, Tripwire Interactive released a massive list of future changes and updates that'll soon be implemented into Deceive Inc. And as someone who has been very much enjoying the game, I thought I'd go through it with you and discuss some of the important details because there is a lot. The link to the document is in the description just in case you want to go and give it a glance yourself. And with that said, let's get started with probably the most exciting news we are getting a brand new agent. So this was the artwork dropped for them yesterday. It's been clarified that they will be a scoundrel type agent, so they'll be on par with Madame Zoo and Larson's abilities. Essentially, these agents are tricksters and usually have some sort of ability that allows them to really mess with your opponent's head. So I'm excited to see what their full character build will entail, as well as if this broken heart has something to do with it. So we'll have to wait and see. Next big change is the new heat system, and this is definitely going to change the game and how players handle themselves through the match. It's basically a wanted level for shooting NPCs, so it's going to prevent trigger happy players from running around and shooting every NPC they see just because they think it could be a player. This is going to be accompanied by a new bar on the bottom of your screen, and for each of these three thresholds that you fill on that bar, your heat level is going to rise. For the first heat level, you're going to become 30% more vulnerable to damage for 12 seconds. For the second heat level, you're going to be 50% more vulnerable to damage for 15 seconds. And for the third and final heat level, you're now labeled as a rogue agent, and you're going to take 100% more damage for 20 seconds and gain the exposed status effect, making you unable to go back into cover for that time duration. Once players revert back to cover and lay low for a while, their heat level will slowly lower and they can get back in the game. Side note though, upon killing a VIP, your heat bar will fill completely to the third and final threshold, labeling you as a rogue agent immediately, so it's safe to say, don't kill a VIP unless you're 100% sure it's a real player. This entire heat system is a big attempt to, as I said, penalize trigger happy players and people who just run around shooting every NPC they see. Hopefully this will lead to a more strategic and spy-like style of play that the devs are obviously pushing, and for good reason. Now the next few things are going to be team related, so first off, devs notice that team games are progressing and ending a lot faster than solos do, and yes, obviously everything is going to be faster with three people on a team, but they also believe it's because in teams, intel is essentially tripled. Each player on a team can grab the same intel computer. So the change is, intel can now only be scanned once per team, not per individual. The devs say it's going to slow down the extreme speed of unlocking vault terminals in the first phase, it's going to add strategy to team matches and who should take which intel to have the most efficient run, it's going to add incentive to split the team, taking more risks while speeding up the team's progression, and it's going to give a lot of value to finding key cards in teams. They know it's going to be a big change and it'll take a lot of getting used to, but they do believe it'll overall be beneficial for teams in the long run. Now next up is the team revive mechanic. As of right now, each team member has one spare life as long as they are revived by a teammate. If they die a second time, they're left to spectate their team for the rest of the game, which can be a frustrating experience. To change this, devs have implemented three spare lives, but with a decreased max health for every life you lose. After being revived for the first time, your max health is going to drop to 75. The second time, your max health will drop to 50, and the third and last revive, your max health is going to drop to 35. The devs are hoping this is going to increase playtime by allowing you to play with your team, even if you're not as valuable in a fight. They also said that they're going to monitor this change, and they'll keep tweaking the balance over time. Next is a change to the actual vault terminal rooms, and the loot economy regarding keycards and perk chests. So one is, rooms that contain a real vault terminal will now never have a purple or orange keycard inside them. Two, rooms that contain a real vault terminal will no longer have a purple field upgrade chest. Three, rooms that do not have a vault terminal will have a guaranteed keycard, either purple or orange. Four, rooms that do not have a vault terminal will have a purple chest. Five, purple rooms in the vault will now have two purple chests per room, and six, Green rooms have a buffed spawn pool to make them more useful in the overall flow. They say the goal behind these changes is to reward players for finding real vault terminals, but at the same time giving players an incentive to find non-vault terminals even if they found a real one on the first try, as these non-vault terminal rooms now have guaranteed orange or purple keycards and upgrade chests. Now the next large chunk is just general changes and there are a lot, so again if you want a more in-depth description of everything changing I advise you go and check it out for yourself, but I'm just going to go through of some of the major changes that I thought were most worth mentioning. The first is they're tweaking the jumping mechanics, so players can't air strafe anymore when jumping during gunfights. They're going to make jumping players easier to track and reduce a lot of that control that players have while in air. 
Next is hitboxes. They're going to go back and adjust tweak the hitboxes for different character models as well as removing arms from limb damage. So now shooting a player's arms and anywhere above the waist is now going to count as body damage. And it, it sounds like from the text that this change was made specifically for characters like Cav whose arms are directly in front of her body when they're holding their weapons. So Next is recoil control. Devs went in and changed a lot of the recoil for most of the weapons, in fact to make them snappier and more immediate. Uh, not sure if this will be a good thing or not, specifically because I've heard a lot of players complain about how they don't want the game to embody just another shooter, and I do agree with that, but it definitely seems like they are trying to keep that spy versus spy experience to the best of their ability. Vertical audio and weapon sound is going to get an update. They added a low pass filter and tweaked the volume on different weapons, which should help players identify the source of a gunfight better. And they also changed the sound range of each weapon, making more powerful weapons louder than less powered ones. The next one is actually a big one. The overall visual nav mode when carrying the briefcase is going to be changed. So instead of seeing which NPC a player is disguised as through a wall, you're only going to see the agent's character model instead, leaving the NPC they're disguised as still a mystery. Players who are also abusing the hollow mimic are now going to show up as crouched agents. So sorry guys, no more getting the jump on the extractor just by hiding as a plant in the corner. In addition though, quick scanning with the briefcase is going to cost one intel every time, making it a less powerful strategy when escaping with the case. Another interesting added change is going to be a vault terminal alert that lets you know if another agent is in the same purple room as you. The alarm only works with real vault terminal rooms and will play an alarm with a red screen on the actual vault computer. The alarm will be disabled as soon as the terminal is hacked, but this is a good way to know if another agent is in your immediate area. The last few things before we wrap up here are mainly map changes. So there's going to be more props in the glass corridors on Silver Reef to give players more cover and make gunfights more interesting. And finally, doors that lead into vault terminals are no longer transparent, so you have no idea what's inside or even if it's a real vault terminal until you're in there. This concludes the majority of the new season catalog, Misery Empire, which we should be seeing more of any time, and I cannot wait until it drops. Let me know what you all think about the new changes down below, how you feel about the heat system, any ideas or thoughts you have on how the new agent will be, drop it down in the comments. I do my best to respond to everyone. I appreciate you all staying this long, it means a lot to me. I've got some funny deceiving content on my channel, so if you care to check it out, if not, it's all good. I hope I gave you some insight into the future of deceiving. Liking, commenting, subscribing, it all helps me out immensely. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys on the next one.